Hi, and welcome to Two Ordinary Nerds, a podcast where two ordinary nerds talk about chocolate. Oh, that sounds good. It sounds sexy, right? What are you doing today? How am I doing the podcast? What are you doing? I'm not talking to you, I'm talking about our guest, Ian. What are you doing today? Uh, oh, well, I guess I'm here talking about chocolate with you guys. Hey, yes. Yes, you are. So today, while well, we are still going to bring up our beers, today we're going to talk to Ian about his new chocolate business. What is it called? Fries and Chocolates. And so we're going to discuss that. Okay. What beer are you drinking on? I'm drinking the Stone uh, Coffee Milk Stout. It's a uh, bittersweet creamy coffee glass stout. And it's from a Colorado brewery. I'm drinking on a Beer Camp Golden IPA by Sierra Nevada. You all know Sierra, Sierra Nevada. They're in Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> I would say this is a, it's a good IPA. Not as It's not super hoppy. More of like a pale ale hop. Were you, you drinking on the same thing? Yeah, the stone coffee milk stout. It's pretty tasty. Yeah, I like it. It has like a little coffee flavor in the back, but it's still quite as, it's not as smooth. I was going to thought it was going to be heavier. I might have to try that if we uh, do another podcast. So we're going to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy after uh, a little bit. Our friend Ian is here. He's also a big nerd. Uh, I think his expertise are normally anime and video games. Um, video, video games. games. So we're going to sweeten this deal and jump into the podcast. Alright, so let's uh, let's start this off by uh, talking to you about your chocolates. Oh. So how did you come up with the name? Sorry, I just felt like doing like the dial. Diana Ross. Well, I went through a lot of different names. The one before this was called Reverie Chocolate, like a dream chocolate. Mm -hmm. But my uh, girlfriend said it sounded like rubbery chocolate, so I kind of steered away from that, and then I just decided to put my name on it, Fries and Chocolates. I don't think it's a good name. I think, I think it's a good name, too. Thanks. In case, like, being, like, if I didn't know you, I'll, I'll just think it was like a, some sort of, like, High class. Yeah, chocolate. it's a higher end. It sounds like a higher end name. Mm -hmm. Well, when I looked at all the other chocolatiers and people that make what I make, they put their name on it normally. So there's usually three of them. You know, like musketeers. There's usually yeah. three. I was thinking more like Christopher and Obo, but, but yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> so why? why so do you, why do you went into chocolates? Like from all the things that you could done, why chocolate? Especially because I've seen your work as like a chef doing other creative artwork with food. What made you decide to go into this? Well, I've always liked cooking. The main thing I like is making something and someone else enjoy. I thought I would like fine dining and taking my time with each plate and like you guys have seen those pictures oh, yeah. where like my scallops or whatever. And this all happened over the span of like a month actually. So I went, I left the, the casino, went to the President Hilton, worked in their Providence restaurant and they put me on saute and I'm doing everything I like. I was like, this sucks. Can you cuss on your podcast? Yeah, fuck, fuck yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah. It's like, this fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, uh, well, I like making desserts and stuff. So I started messing around on their dessert station. I was going to start doing like preserved fruit and all this kind of stuff and making cupcakes. But then I saw they had chocolate. I was like, oh, I'll make chocolate covered fruit rinds or whatever. And then I started messing around and making molds, and then I started looking into it, and I was like, wow, I can, like, design the outsides of these however I want. I can put any kind of filling. I've seen, like, banana split chocolates. I've seen anything you can think of, someone has made it, or you can make it. So I was like, oh, this is a pretty creative outlet, and I can do whatever I want. Instead of taking five minutes for a plate, I can really take time make the flavor exactly how I want it, and then in one bite get a whole dessert in that. So, well, and creative aspect of the design of the chocolate itself. Yeah, the molds. I think that's pretty cool, the molds. If you guys haven't seen it, it's uh, follow us on Two Ordinary Nerds on Facebook. Uh, we also, I think we've posted it on Twitter before also. Mm -hmm. If we haven't, we'll have to yell at our Twitter advisor. But uh, yeah, follow us on there, and you can see, we follow... Frierson chocolate? Frierson, Frierson, Frierson chocolates. chocolates. It's spelled Frierson. Okay, that's say it, yeah. Frierson. Frierson chocolates. Uh, we, so we do follow them. Make sure you go on our Facebook page and like his page also, and you can see the chocolates he makes weekly. 
For, so for people who are like don't know between the Reese's peanut butter cup chocolates and the higher end of yours, yes. What is an easy way, or how would you explain the difference? Because you know when you see Reese's peanut butter and they're like fifty cents, and then you see a higher end chocolate. It's hey, like, fuck you! I bought two <clears throat> four packs of Reese's today at work, and they were three dollars. I can tell they're not that cheap. <laughs> oh, fuck off! <laughs> I didn't eat all of them. I shared them with my coworkers. God, what a you work from home. <laughs> well, there's a number of things that go into the company Reese's being able to make their chocolate that cheap. One, they probably get their chocolate sent directly to them. They make the chocolate, or the cocoa beans, they make the chocolate, and then it goes downhill from there. But they're so thin, and those kind of candies focus on what's on the inside more than the chocolate. Because if you pick a Reese's up, if you hold it for 10 seconds, it's going to melt in your hands. Yep. My chocolate is a higher quality chocolate it has more cocoa butter in it which means that when you bite into it it's going to have a crisp snap to it and it, you can hold it and as long as the room you're in isn't hot it'll stay there in your hand and it won't melt mm. and the inside is a higher quality it's not like Reese's where they just make peanut butter and throw it in there this is homemade caramel or homemade whatever I whatever I decide to put in there I've made this from scratch from from Original. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, that's... So what's your? I know we've talked a little about this before when we were having dinner, but what's your goals in the future? Like, what do you want to do? Um, you had a cool idea that you mentioned to us before about a, a, a restaurant idea. So I thought we could. Oh, uh, I don't know what I would call it, but basically, you could go to this place, hang out, kind of like a wine bar. You could buy wine, alcohol, uh, but you could buy like a bottle of wine and a box of chocolates for I don't I don't know like forty bucks chill, hang out, there'd be live bands there every once in a while. Um, but I think wine or alcohol in general and chocolate go together. Well, chocolate and everything really go together, but I yeah, think... Here at Two Ordinary Nerds, we're going to we're gonna solidify the name right now. It's going to be called Ian's Wine and Dine. Ian, oh, that sounds classic. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you no, know, but it's true. It's, it's, it's such a... Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect combination. Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, I mean, you can, like you said earlier, you can mix it with you know any kind of alcohol, and you don't see shops like that around here. You no. see in Kansas. No, you don't. You it's, see, you know, shops that have chocolate and shops that have wine, but you don't see them together. Yeah, no, like I can think right now, like I know, like a good red wine will go amazing with dark chocolate. Mm-hmm. And and I know it's like I mean, if the laws you know start to pass and. Other substances allowed. Yeah, it's a, it's a big hit yes, for me. Yes, Kansas, it's it's a big hit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's 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 something unique. I don't see like in my line of work. I see new businesses all the time, and I mean, it's such a unique idea, such a fun idea, something that it's you know it's in the community. It starts small, and it can, it has endless possibilities. It's just it makes you feel proud that at least like that entrepreneur spirit that. And it's not only entrepreneurs, like knowing that what you're getting is also the best quality and it comes for somebody who, it's, it's his heart, it's his passion. It's not just for making money because let's be honest, no chef becomes a chef to make money. It's just like podcasters. I, I can, working in many restaurants and many kitchens, I can, I can attest to that. Yeah, I think anybody that has a passion, like I always thought, oh, what can I do as a hobby that would make me money? And then finally one day I just woke up and I, I, you know, I was dreaming of Daniel, but I was also, (laughs) I woke up and texted him and was like, hey, you know, we should, I jokingly said, we should do a podcast. And it was like two days later, he's like, no, but seriously, we should do a podcast. (laughs) So then, and you know, we never anticipate making money, but if in in the future there's people on YouTube and stuff that make money off that, you know, if that happens to us, we need to broaden it, you know, our YouTube channel and stuff to where that happens. I mean, I'm not going to argue about it, but. Or so we just like the open conversation part, you know, just like you, you get to, if it's your thing, you can do what you want. Exactly. And even if on here, if we say, oh, you know, we, we fucking suck, at least you know it's our shit. Yeah, it's our yeah. shit. I mean, it's, but it's a, it's, it starts as a hobby and then it becomes something else. Yeah. The one piece of advice I could give to anybody that is looking to start their own business is just write down a list of everything you enjoy to do and... Think of a way that you can make money off of it with not, but not selling out so much. Like not like, becoming Nickelback. 
not becoming an Equipac. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, it's it's just a. But I mean, it's like like it's it's your nerdy thing. It's which what what is your nerdy thing? What are you nerdy about? Like we all have our jobs, and you know, and some you know, we, we we try to like our jobs, but it's not our nerdy thing. Few yeah. people have that their nerdy thing is you know is their job. Well, I mean, we always figured you know we left movie theaters we were talking afterwards like oh man we should what did you think about this what did you think about that or like the next TV show we'd call each other you know and whisper sweet nothings into each other's ears before we went to bed exactly <laughs> and, and then we finally were like why not just do that on a day where we don't have any women around and we can do it by ourselves exactly that's for you you know you too <laughs> um, so uh, it looks like you brought some hors d'oeuvres I did so, is there a way where you should uh, taste the chocolates? Uh, these are meant to be eaten in one bite. Okay. Um, this oh. is the new design I have made for oh, my man. caramels. Cheers. You gonna do you one gonna, with this? Sure, I'll do one with it. We gotta finish it out. Oh, just eat that Cheers. and wait a couple minutes. Right. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. It it's a little, your mouth. It's a little hot in here. That's why they're like that. Maybe we should have done what you said and put them in the refrigerator. I don't... It still was delicious. I mean, I felt like I had... Yeah, it's delicious. No, it felt like it just, it just totally melts in your mouth. I mean... It's not meant to do that, but... It's well, pretty... It's a burst of... Uh, mine was more of a burst. Of, like, a, it was... I a bit into it, and it was just a burst of flavors. So yeah. I felt a little... I'm not a bit... I'm not, I'm not a good... My palate sucks. <laughs> so, I... But I can, t- I can. Oh, it's good with that stout. Like I'm tasting it afterwards. Yeah, that's why I, I chose the stout because I knew the chocolate will go with. This pairing is brought to you by Daniel. <laughs> but it was like you can tell it's not a simple, it's not a simple chocolate. It has more. Oh yeah, there was way more flavors. I think even like the coating on top. I mean, it had. I mean, yeah, there's a there's a whole bunch of flavors. It doesn't. It's not just like chocolate. It's it's sweet, but then there's some. Like I said, my palate is. Whole. Yeah. Well, the chocolate that I get, it's. There's four chocolates that I can get that are higher quality from just like Reese's or whatever. And this one is kind of mid-range. I wanted to get a higher quality of it, but it has like fruity notes in it and it has like, uh, I forgot. There's like a whole chart that I didn't memorize for this, but it does have more to it than just the normal sweet chocolatey flavor that you get with 99 cent chocolate at the yeah. store. So. Yeah, because yeah. you can taste. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. ahead. I, I could take you know you, I'm not a huge chocolate fan. I mean I love Reese's and stuff, but I don't really eat a lot of chocolate because I find it really bitter. But I've never had high end chocolate. See, with starting this, I used to not like dark chocolate at all because store dark chocolate is like you said bitter. But if you get higher quality chocolate, you taste more of the chocolate and it's better refined and it's they they make it better. So yeah, this is I'm a big fan. Of, I'm a big fan of dark chocolate. I'm normally not a big fan of the more sweeter kind. Yeah. One of my favorite is, I don't know if you ever had this, like the Lent 98%. Lent, yeah. That is, that is, I mean, but I mean, I like to, my, how I like to eat chocolates, I like to eat small amounts one at a time. Like, it's like, and you, I like to have one just sugar. Like to, f- like to actually taste the chocolate yes. and savor it. But that, but at the same time with this one, it's, it's it's I mean, it's not too sweet that it your, you know, it's just the only thing you taste is sugar. Yeah, it's, but it's I didn't it's, taste sugar, like you know, even with the Reese's, I adore Reese's. But if you eat one, all I mean, you taste peanut butter, then just a sudden rush of sugar, or vice versa. I mean, but that I did. I, I mean, I definitely tasted the chocolate blended with the caramel, and I'm not a caramel fan at all. And that it was delicious. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I thought it was delicious. It's. Still record too many of those things. I didn't know that. I think you did a great job. I, th- I know you're going to be successful. I think anybody who does, you know, does does a good job, puts work and work through effort and loves what to do. And I know it's going to be successful. It's just, you know, it's it could be a slow process. It could be a fast process, but it all depends on you. Yep. Hey, you know what? You got to just take your time with stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no rush. Yeah. If you if you rush it. You're guaranteed to gush it. Get it with chocolate, huh? <laughs> so one of the questions I want to ask is what can, like, our small little community or the community around you can do to help you grow your business and become, make your nerdy theme become even more nerdy? Uh, I guess when I, when I put this in stores, eventually when I put this in, like, coffee shops and hopefully grocery stores and stuff, 
I'll let you guys know and just go support the stores I do and support the small businesses that I, I partner with. Like, like you guys said earlier, this isn't really to make money. It's I'm doing what I love. And if I know I, I put enough time into it, the money will eventually come. Yep. So just where, wherever I sell this, just help support that business that I'm, I'm selling out of. So. Awesome. Valentine's Day. Ladies. Mother's Day is coming soon. Yeah. So I was going to ask you in this episode, like, I want to get a box for my mother-in-law, although my mom's Spain, so. Yeah, I can do that for you. We'll post a bunch of stuff about Ian's stuff. Yeah. I mean, we always do anyways. I mean, we share most of your stuff on there all the time. I appreciate it. And then when we post the podcast, I will also tag you in that as well. So now let's switch to our Guardians little synopsis. Get back here, Groot. So, <laughs> uh, Ian hasn't seen it, but he's fine with the... I'm still going to watch it. It's going to be spoiled. Spoilers. Most of this is just going to be spoilers. We're not going to segregate it into two different sec- sections like we usually do. We're just going to join, jump right in. Everyone dies. <laughs> <laughs> Even fucking Spider-Man. Oh, man. Yeah. So basically, basically turns out like a couple months after the first one seems. Yeah, it's a couple months after. Really quick. It's baby group is still baby group. Why? Now, guess now it's toddler group. He's the way. Well, he, he's not in the pot anymore. Now he's like... Walking around. Five year old group that's he's not he's not an infant, he's a he's a toddler. Right? Yeah, he's a toddler. Yeah. But he has the mentality of a toddler too. Yeah. Oh. So he's that's he's a... sitting there like part of it, he's eating you can see this in the preview where he's just eating M and M's. Yeah. Which is funny. Where the fuck did they get M and M's from? They're in the they're they, space M and M's. Yeah, space M&Ms. <laughs> God damn it, I knew they that's a monopoly. But they get they, they get a lot of things from from the world. Like there's aliens that go to the world and come back, I feel, because there's a lot of Little I feel air, like I air. feel like that joke just went full circle with your chocolates and M&M's. I mean, I mean, we just went. Basically, the story goes around like there is Star uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy are hired by this group of people to uh, protect these batteries from this monster that comes through. To it has like tentacles and crap. Basically, they defeat the mountain, the monster, and a rocket decides to steal the batteries that we're supposed to protect him. He steals like a couple of them, yeah. Yeah, and they're worth like millions or billions. And they if, if, I don't mean to interrupt, but if you if if any of you viewers have ever seen Too Fast, Too Furious, it's like when Tyrese has his lifts up his shirt and he says pockets ain't empty because it's just like that. <laughs> what? I know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You've never seen that? Yeah. I've well, him and Paul Walker, they, they they're walking and like they. Oh. They had this drug dealer they had to get all this money from, yeah. and before the feds come in, because they were working with the feds, Tyrese is like, oh man, we should open up our own shop, and Paul Walker's like, oh, I don't know if we can do that, we don't have any money, and he's like, pockets ain't it, because, <laughs> it's just like, Ro- Gro- or, uh, not Gro- uh, well, yeah. Rocket doing that to drugs. Exactly, Drax. that is a great mm-hmm. example, he basically steals from the people who's paying them. Mm-hmm. So the people who's paying him basically send like this army to, to kill him. And that I was gonna say we should talk about the army right right now before we where how I don't know if you notice this but when they're the army that chases the guardians after they realize that they stole the batteries they it's a virtual reality simulation they're actually still on their planet but their ships are guided by virtual reality of the people that are flying them it's like a big video game mm-hmm. and the best part of that simulation is that they have Galaga sounds when they're <laughs> shooting at them or like... That is, yeah, I was going to mention that. And they go like, pew, 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 Yeah, pew, pew. it is great. It is. And they, and when one, there's only one, uh, when there's only one ship alive still, and because they're going through the asteroids and the other one were like hooking up and looking at them and like watching them, come on, and like yeah. shooting for him like it was a video game. He's over the million do- the million point mark. <laughs> it's over 9,000. But basically, they're about to get killed and the spaceship comes along and destroys the hunter army. Let me know that that spaceship is Ego, the living planet, and that's going to be Star Lord's dad. Yada yada yada. Basically, Star Lord, a you know, falls in love with the dad. They all like have this little stupid little moment. The other montage, which I do like, how they put in the the father dad. 80s montage where they're like throwing a ball together like oh like it's the like baseball. Slow, yeah it's slow motion but it's like an energy ball and he's like they're throwing it back and forth but they purposely put that in there just to I mean obviously they're they well, like Star Lord talks about like how he saw the other kids playing yeah. baseball with his kid he wanted that experience so he eventually uh, uh, the dad 
the ego of the planet this, the, sees that he's gonna make this put his I think his spirit almost seems like his inner being yeah or and all the planets in the, in the galaxy in the in the universe and he's gonna become basically like a god yeah but unfortunately in his plan he fell in love with Star Lord's mom and every time he went to the earth to be with the, the mom he slowly was longer and longer there. He, just, he realized that if he went back again he would basically be trapped there forever because he was loved there so he basically planted a tumor in her head huh Makes sense, you know. So then Star Lord goes batshit crazy, which I really like it because in most movies you have the the villain who's trying to explain why he did the villain thing he did. Well, and then the the pro- protagonist is that right? The yeah. good guy, yeah. The protagonist is uh, he's sitting there listening to him before they fight. But this time Star Lord's just like, "You killed my mother." And then he's like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. He just like, shoo, 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 just starts shooting him. It's like, you mother. Yeah, so so yeah, he basically shoots the shit out of him. And then the guy, the dad gets like, gets pissed and basically puts him in timeout. Mm-hmm. Like he stabs him with this like energy beam that basically the dad needs Star Lord's energy because mm-hmm. he has superpowers also, I guess. So he needs his energy. So he was wanting to them to be buddy buddies. But after the shoot, he puts him in timeout. So maybe he stabs him with his energy beam through his chest. It doesn't kill him. It doesn't. Hurt. He basically just is incapac- incapacitated. Mm-hmm. I think what it did is gave Ego the power he needed. That's why all those the city started to blow. His eggs mm-hmm. on all the planets started to blow up, and then he and then because it just basically froze Star Lord in the air, but it still gave, gave yeah. him the. Yeah, but it, it, it wasn't killing him. So did it turn him into a battery, basically? basically. Yes, that's okay. actually a very good way to put it. He still his battery. Ah, <laughs> another full circle moment, and we're on top of this. So basically, that's the they, you know they, they, they do a big fight, and the galaxy is safe. That's basically there's a whole bunch of spoilers inside of those little many details, but I just wanted to make a quick thing yeah. like this is the, the story. And then at the end, Yon, or they, I was just gonna give it like yeah. open ending. So what do you thought overall? Do you like the movie? Do you didn't like the movie? I liked it as good as the first one, and here's why. I will say the music was a little on the weaker side versus the first one, but the comedy was way better, and I think that's what makes it, separates Guardians from all the other ones, because you see Captain America and all of our other Avengers. It's Most of them, they have their quirky moments, but it's most of the time it's just Robert Downey Jr. being funny, and it's, it's not, I mean, most of the time it's kind of serious. And you go see Guardians because it's funny, you know, and it's an adventure. And this movie really did a home run hit on the comedy. I mean, I laughed a lot. I thought it was a fan-fucking-tastic movie. I, th- I mean, do I think that there's stuff that could be fixed? Yes. I mean, this I do like the storyline. You know, the first one there's just, there is a main big bad guy, and in this one there's kind of two mediocre bad guys. You have Ego on one side that's trying to destroy the world, but it's not a, the universe. The universe. Um, one is just trying to kill them. And then you have uh, what, whatever her, I don't remember what her Goldilocks. Goldilocks. That's what we're going to nickname her. The Golden Girl. Yeah. <laughs> the only one that's still alive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I thought, it, you know, for me, I would give it four and a half beers. I mean, there is stuff that they could have fixed, but I, I don't know. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I will say the five after credits parts were a little much. I don't think that they need to do that because I, I, it really scares me that all these other fucking movies are going to start doing five other after credit shows. And Hidden just, scenes. Yeah. Yeah, and we don't need five. You can just see one I or two. three it would be perfect. One in the beginning, one in the middle, and one in the end. Yeah, because if you have to wait for two and you have to wait for one at the very end of the credits, you might as well have one in the middle, but we don't need fucking five. Um, other than that, I mean, yeah. What's your thoughts? Well, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan. What What's Ian's thoughts without seeing the movie? Well, I think it's a great movie. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> well, it's a Marvel movie, and if it has good humor, which is why I like the first one, then I I think it sounds well, pretty that's good. Right. We watched the first one here because I think you hadn't seen it yet. I think it was like a party we had, and then you. What the. Did I see it? Yeah, we watched it. We we, we had a party. If I was drunk, then we I'm not gonna remember. Drunk. So I do remember the movie though. So okay. I wasn't a big fan of it. Why not? I'm not saying it was bad. I'm just saying Guardians was 
Guardians 1 was just great. It is a fantastic Gu- movie. It's Guardians a- 2 was good. It wasn't great. It was good. And for me, they, it had a little bit too much comedy. It was a little bit, uh, sometimes a little bit too forced. Like, I don't like Drax feels, you know, it's, it's not only like little, little Baby Groot is doing like this. This I feel like Baby Groot could have done, they could have toned it down a little bit with the cuteness. Mm. It was just a little bit too forced cute all the time. So anything like my complaint is, it's not like it's it's bad. It's just a good movie. It's just Baby Groot has imagined thirty cute little things, toning that to twenty. Drax has thirty to a same more or less jokes, toning it back to twenty. That was that was for me. And I think that's because I think Marvel movies normally has ten. Guardians had twenty. This one has thirty. For me, it was a little bit over much. Ah, there was it was, was just it serious enough for you. Well, no, it wasn't as serious enough. It's like you know how sometimes it's just you know how sometimes sketches like imagine when you see Kai and Peele or Cinema Life. Uh, There's some that are just they do gotcha. just doing it way too much. They overdid it. Yeah, okay. that was for me is they overdid it. It was like it's. And, I, and there's a very thin line that it's, some people love it and some people, you know, for me it was a little bit over. It's like, I got the joke. It's not your brand of comedy. No, it, well, it is. I love, I like, I started laughing like in between, like, basically up until like three fourths of the movie. And then it was like, it was just the same. It was like, okay, I get it. Like, it's, you still laugh and it's still good. For me, it's, I was, I'm going to, I guess I'll give it three close to four stars. So three and a half. More than a half. It's like borderline is four stars. So it's a good movie beers. for me. We don't give stars here. Four beers. I was going to say, what the fuck are stars? Yeah. Yeah, like four beers. <laughs> three beers and a chocolate. How about three that? beers and chocolate. <laughs> I would give it... So it's a really good movie. Okay. I said, you should watch it. It's just... When you have Guardians up there. Hey, this is like the 14th Marvel movie. I mean, you can't really... Like all of them, and everyone has different tastes. I loved it. I thought that I do agree with the baby group part. I feel like they kind of capitalized on that for the fact that I mean they're like everyone loved baby group so much, but the creative ways that James Gunn used it was good. I mean, it wasn't. I didn't feel like it was lame at all. Like it felt oh, like no, it no. felt still like Groot. But it is still like I mean, it's, none of them was lame. It's like. If you cut for me, if you cut it two short two jokes back, Drax and Baby Groot, they were the key of the show. I mean, well, Rocket still had his burst. Well, uh, Rocket, I like Rocket. I like Gamora. I like the sister thing. I like. There's a lot of things that I like the that I like the you know, I like the personal stories of each one mm-hmm. of them. It's just for me, Drax and Baby Groot had two or three too many, too many. I if really you took if you take those two or three too many and you put it just tone it down, I would have loved it. I really like how they they kind of delve into uh, Michael Rooker's character Yondu. Mm-hmm. I really like how they kind of dove into his character. Do do they explain why the thing on his head got bigger? Yes. Yes. Okay. That do you want to? Or do you want to? So basically, to? I don't. Did he get an upgrade? Well, what? Yeah. Hey, so basically, I will, a, a good way to start it is they explain his story. So now you know why he's not because the Guardians of the Galaxy. The original comic book, mm-hmm. he was. Yeah, I, I did know that. So they they they, they, they will they will show you the original ones, mm-hmm. the original so they, guardians, and the there. original guardians of the original scavengers. He basically did a uh, uh, basically uh, because of he he basically take kids from their mothers and give it to ego because he was trying to look for one that had the powers. Gotcha. And, gar- and when he realized what he was doing with the kids, because if you didn't have the powers, he basically killed you. He stopped giving away, but because he was trafficking with kids, he broke the scavenger rule, so he was basically kicked out as a scavenger. So when he was doing that, uh, when he was, there was a mutiny in his ship because he did not want to go and give up uh, uh, the Guardians. He just went out. It wasn't on the ship, it was on the planet that they crash landed. But he was, he got mutinated. Yeah, the yeah, there was a mutiny, mutiny but it was, uh, it was Nebula that shot him in the head. Well, yeah, but I missed that because there was immunity. He, shot, he got shot in the head and he used to have like the little thing here, mm-hmm. so he, that thing got fall off. That's how he controls the arrow. Yeah. So he got pulled off, and when he's in jail, Baby Groot has to go and pick up the. This one of the examples for me was one too many. Yeah. When he goes back and he gets like, you need to find this little fin, and it's red. It goes on my head, and he's like, Baby Groot was like, okay. He goes, comes back with a bottle cup. 
comes back with a ketchup <laughs> packet. She comes back. And they did it like for five to six times. Yeah. Like I, th- I laughed the first three. I think oh, there's, there's four. But I think six was way too many. It was like, yes, I get it. He's a baby group. I get it. And then they show you how he gets it. And then he doesn't get it. It's the... Who is it? His friend helps him. Yeah, the uh, James Gunn's big brother. He's one of the scavengers. He's the guy who has the hillbilly accent, the mm-hmm. real skinny. He's actually, ironically, he's the guy who plays Rocket. Bradley Cooper does Rocket's voice, but he, that guy actually does Rocket's uh, motion capture. Oh, really? No, no, yep. no. Hmm. He does. He, he plays both parts. Well, yeah. So he basically, as for, he basically starts the immunity, and to say he was sorry, he basically gives the fan to. Gotcha. So, yeah. But it's but the, it, it, that's something that a guy who guys does. It's explain a little bit better the backstories of the rest of the characters that don't have that much backstory. I think the good thing about um, about James Gunn is he knows when not to put too much in. I mean, I agree in your aspect. There is some parts that were a little saturated that it could have been less, like the baby group part with finding the fin. But he knew, you know, for instance, like. Spider-Man 3. Way too many fucking villains. <laughs> well, in this movie, they were going to put in Adam Warlock as a character, but then he cut him out because he's like, eh, that's a little too many storylines. We don't need to have all that, which is really good. I will say the, the best part of that movie, I think, is the ending. Well, after they kill Ego, they have to get off the planet because he is a living planet, so after they destroy it, he's blowing blowing in on himself or whatever, blowing himself. <laughs> Yeah. You kill him and he starts yeah, blowing himself. Yeah. It's just like defecation. Yeah, you exactly. start blowing yourself. Yes. Like that. So Star Lord is, is basically stuck yeah. in the planet, and Rocket makes the, the a sick of decision to leave the planet and doom Star Lord because they need it. Basically, they didn't have enough time to get the spaceship out, and so basically he says no, go. So basically, you can tell that Rocket is going to be the second in command, mm-hmm. and he basically leaves. But well, he says he's like I don't. Because he says it really quietly, but he's like, "I we gotta leave," and everyone's like, "No, we can't leave him." And he's like, "I, I can't lose two More. of my friends today." Or well, my family. Or yeah, because Nebu, not Nebula, but uh, Gamora was gonna go out and save him, and mm-hmm. then he took off before she could jump out. He shoots her in the back, stuns her. That's right. And he they fly away, but then he jumps. He basically, when you think that they're gonna do him, in, you can see him. He gets in and sacrifices himself. He takes his spaceship, his spacesuit, and gives it to My, uh, Michael Rooker, Yondu. Uh, he he. There's two suits that he gives. He has an oxygen suit where he can breathe. He can breathe in space or whatever. But you, which is weird that you think Yondu can breathe in space just because he's kind of an alien or whatever. But that's that's racist. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're yeah, an alien. Yeah, can breathe he, in space. Yeah, <laughs> so come on, Goku can. And he, and he has the nipper herder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. Drax doesn't like to have, like, the little the, rocket. The jetpack. The jetpack because it hurts his nipples. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, at the end, he's like, oh, my nipples! He's shooting But that, for me, is, like, group. perfect. Yeah. Like, you know, the exposition. Yeah. Joke. Yep. Not for me, but it sealed the deal. But for me, if it did it, like, nipple, 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 yeah. I've been, like, there's too many nipple jokes. But that one was perfect because it was, like, you Speaking were Speaking of nipple jokes, follow us on RedTube and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, Porno. Yeah, Porno. <laughs> They're a huge sponsor. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so Michael Rooker has the jetpack, and then Chris Pratt has the the oxygen. oxygen one, where he and he can't even take it off. I mean, he's trying to take it off to give it to him. And I really like how they incorporated that. You know, like in the first movie, they did that with Gamora. He gave her his mask, and he was about to die. And Yondu was the one who saved him, and they incorporated that into this movie. But this time, he couldn't save the person that he wanted. You know, Chris Pratt couldn't save him. You know, and then mm-hmm. Yondu dies because of being in space. One of those good moments was he realized that God, like he was like, "You're my son," and I might be your biological dad. He's like, "I'm not your father, your... but I'm your, I'm your daddy." Yeah. I was like, I was like, mm, that mm-hmm. itch in the feelers. Mm. So basically, and he uh, basically. And before that, there is, what is it? 
It's not Al- uh, Schwarzenegger. What's his name? Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone hey. is one of the original Guardians, and he's they they meet in this planet by accident, and basically he's like, you will never have, you will never be a scavenger, even though you wear the the symbol, but you know you will never have the treatment like this death funeral, like a Viking thing to basically burn you up and. Mm-hmm. Because he sacrificed, and the rest of the people heard about it. All the scavengers come in, and they make like this huge funeral, which was pretty. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it was a great way to end the movie. Movie is that they. That's what I like about this. These mo- the Guardians movies is that although you Chris Pratt is Star Lord, is probably one of the main characters. Still, the side characters are as big as the main character. I mean, well, yeah, like- showing a big funeral for Yondu at the end. Is just, I mean, he's a side character. I mean, he wasn't in the movie as much as the other ones, but still, it's still emotionally impactful. Yeah. In this movie, they go a little bit more in uh, Gamora's and her sister Nebula's relationship. Yep. And, and how why she... Nebula hates Gamora. I was going to say, isn't Nebula the one that. The blue girl? Yeah. yeah. yeah so she got she... fucked up in the last movie. Yeah, so she they explain that relationship about why she hates her so much and their sister. I, I think I, I know about their background, so. Yeah, and then there is the. Uh, they stole one guy got a, got her man mm-hmm. and it just it just ended downhill from there. <laughs> then there was Rocket's sassy attitude a little bit. Oh they, yeah, they they, they, they they left him. They did all of that. So they, yes, they do, they do they did like three or four side characters and they explained their history not so much about yeah, Star Lord. Drax and Mantis have their own kind of story going on, and mm-hmm. it's really nice because they. They separate the characters, so you get to know them a little more because I feel like in the first one we get to know them, but it's you know they have to rush. It's it just it's the enough. first movie. It's yeah. enough. So this is can, this person. This is how they act. Now they're going on. An this is how they become exactly. their team. Yeah. So yeah, like Drax, family died. That's why he's mad. That's why he wants to kill Gamora, ex ex assassin, blah 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 blah. But yeah. now it's more like Gamora and Nebula. Well, when they were fighting, and every, and if somebody loses the Ah, what's the guy's name? The Thanos. Thanos. Thanos would take one of her part and put like a robot part. So she and every time she lost, she kept getting replaced. She getting replaced, replaced, and Nebula was saying like, "You could at least let me one one time." Like I was tortured, and you know, and my eye got cut out, my brain got cut out, my arm got cut out, and you could have ruined me once. And she was like, "I was," and then Nebula was, and Gamora was like, "I was a little girl. I was fighting for my life." So that was like the little, and then there was like this little sister moment, like, come with us, you can save the, you know, you can save the little girls in the world, and she's like, no, I'm going to call and kill Thanos. And then she goes off to fight Thanos, which I watched on the Nerdist, uh, that was from Friday, but they were like, oh, what can Guardians Volume 3 bring us? And they said that this movie is four years before... The Infinity War? Yep. Did you watch that too? No, I should just, I... Well, that's the main storyline with Thanos. Yeah, I know about... The Thanos or Infinity War I've timeline. Read those, but I didn't know the timeline. Yeah, they said it's four years before that. So then that's why one of the the credits at the end, one of the after ones, is it because both of like three of them are mainly just gag ones, gag ones, and it was just a. It showed Groot, but he was a teenager, and he's sitting there playing a video game, and Chris the Pratt walks. Full of shit yeah, there. it's like. <laughs> tree branches and stuff all over the room. He's like, God damn it, Groot, clean up your <laughs> shit! And he's like, Chris Pratt's like, scolding into him like a father. Yeah. And then Groot's like, mm. he's, like he's like, I, I am Groot! Groot. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, so good. So that was one of them. Another one is the original Guardians joining together. Oh, yeah. Which the funny part is there's this little helmet that almost looks like a Doctor Who's Machine yeah, it Man. It looks a Cyber Man. Cyber Man, but it's not. It's one of the Guardians. It's, it's Miley Cyrus' voice. <laughs> yeah, she's one of them. She's one of the Guardians, so... And then the other one was... Uh, my, uh, Adam Warlock's <laughs> cocoon. And she's like, oh, I'm going to call him Adam. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the biggest one that I was pretty excited about. And but then, they're not going to show him until Guardians Volume 3. So I wonder why. Yeah, I wouldn't be amazed if he comes out for them because in the, he is the turning point in the Infinity War. Well, he gets the comment. Well, yeah, he gets <laughs> it, but like Thanos was beating them until Adam Warlock shows up, and then Adam Warlock shows up, and then that's how he gets it. And then in the, I think they're reversing it because I think because in 
it's Infinity War and then Infinity Gauntlet, but they're refu- reversing it in Infinity Gauntlet's the movie that's before, and then Infinity War is after that, where they have to, I think they have to work with Thanos. I don't know. I th- they said that they're I think they're reversing it. They haven't released the fourth movie, but I think it's reversed somehow. I, that's just what Nerdist said. Um, I mean, I, I I think the future. You know, I'm excited for it. But it, Infinity Gauntlet is not the best story in Marvel, it which is, I think is kind of fun, yeah. kind of weird that they're going with that one. I think it's just a good one to bring all the characters together, but they to all turn into a movie. Basically, yeah. he destroys everything. He wins. Thanos wins. Yep. He just realized that he is basically gets bored and reverses it all back together. But he yeah, wins but the that war. The hell, or not hell? Is that her name? The one that's that's the actual the the Queen of the Dead or whatever. Yeah, she helps them death. defeat. Thanos in that and there's death and then there's hell is the, is the, the hell goddess okay no, no. but in the Infinity Gauntlet Thanos wins he wins mm-hmm. he beats everybody and then he's like he did. He realized he's not gonna get this affection he gets mad and then returns everything to normal oh okay and that's how it goes there's not a pointing point in the war he wins it see and I don't think that that's what they're gonna do I mean well, that's I what I not. like about the MCU is that they don't go verbatim off of the comics they, they go mm-hmm. Because if that was the case, then you guys don't care about spoilers. Or oh, no. Captain America would have died in what's it called? Civil War. Oh, Civil yeah, we War. Definitely, he, would have, we've, he would have fucking died. We've talked ah, about that in our. Died. But he died? In, well, I mean, no, no, he did not die. Yeah. It was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, what is it? It was a. Uh, scroll? Imposter? Yes. Oh, or, or, yeah. Uh, he, doesn't, what, he doesn't die, die. He had somebody else. Hmm. But for example. Uh, uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. But I mean, it's. The, I just hope it's, it's a good movie on the gauntlet. But I mean, anybody who gets the gauntlet should be invincible. Mm-hmm. Well, Thanos is damn near invincible because he's before the universe. He's one of the immortals. Is that what it's The celestials. Not anymore. celestials. Not, Thanos is no longer. Well, not in the comics. In the, in the was, comics, he's. But he's not. Not even. The celestials are four. There are a few in there. Thanos basically was born from this alien species. The new thing, like there's a new, there was a new comic called Thanos, mm-hmm. and there was like a new species, and he, they're all like grayish, but he turned out to be purple-ish. Mm-hmm. So basically, he's special. And they did the good old racism, pu- push him out to the curbs, and he basically starts getting hatred and hatred, and then he kills and falls in love with the idea of death, and she, he realizes there's there is death mm-hmm. and falls in love and starts. All the they showed the uh, Watchers and Guardians finally. Oh, Stanley cool. is the Watcher. Yes. I, I, I. I saw that theory, and yeah. I'm glad that they confirmed that. Yes, yeah, Stan- Stanley is a watcher, and it's fun because he's sitting there like, "I'm this one time I was a FedEx employee," <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the watchers walk away, and then they're like, "Don't," and you know, and Stan's like, "No, no, I got more stories." <laughs> <laughs> is Tony Stank there? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I think it's I think it's fun. I wonder if they're gonna be if he's gonna be the 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 uh, Earth wa- uh, Watcher. Well, he James. Is- James Gunn has said that he just he when they were doing this he filmed all of his next cameos for the next six movies because he's so old you don't know if he's going to croak over so well that's going to be I think that's going to be a little bit disrespectful you're getting to the it was probably I'm just going to do the wrap it up <laughs> it was probably his idea honestly Stan Lee was probably like yeah I should probably get these done before because I mean my t- I hope that he becomes him and uh, he becomes the one above all. Because there is a god, god in the yeah. Marvel, and he's the one. And I hope they be, they make him the one because he basically created created him, and he's the father of all of it. Well, oh, him and Kirby, I think it was. Yeah, that. there's one other guy. I think it was Kirby, but yeah, it's my uh, the thing I want to watch is Secret Wars. I think Secret Wars was ten times better story than Thanos. Well, they're definitely incorporated Secret Avengers because that's what. Captain America is going to be. Well, well the, they're the gonna, Secret Avengers and Secret Wars are totally different. I know, but what I'm saying is that that's what they're doing, and I guarantee you, that's how they're going to. It's like Tony. Tony's going to be in charge of the Avengers now, and like helping them try to fight Thanos as a problem, and then they can't handle it, so they have to call in the backup that no one knew about. And I think that's how they're going to be like, oh, surprise, he's here. Who would have guessed? They're friends again. But do you know the story about Secret Wars? I, I know what I. No. Do you know this premise of Secret Wars? I know bits and pieces of it. So basically, at first, there's this... I will be very vague. So there's this guy who's basically... Like, he's almost like Philistia. He's so good. He makes this world 
and he's bored out of his mind, so he brings the best heroes of the Earth versus the best villains of the Earth. So Doctor Doom, he brings Galacticus. Basically a fucking video game. Yeah, and makes them fight. And you're like, oh, you have to fight, and mm. the one who survives can go, and the team who survives can go back to Earth. So the, you know, the superheroes were like, no, no, we will never fight. And the villains were like, bam! And then that storyline, for example, that's cool, is they throw a mountain on top of the Hulk, and the Hulk picks it up and lifts the mountain, and the heroes get out. There's where Spider-Man gets his black suit. Mm. There's where Doctor Doom is a fucking genius, and that's why I love him so much. He steals the power of the... Doctor Doom is always a genius. Well, he's always a genius, but it's he, but he steals the power of the basic god and becomes god. But then, of course, he loses the power because if you guys didn't know, we're recording this on a race track, right? <laughs> and they're making a left turn. Yep. But I mean, he is. I love Doctor uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom. He's Doom. he's one probably one of my favorite Marvel villains because logically he's not such a bad guy. He's trying to rule his own. Lavidia. Yeah, his own country. So, I, I don't know. Stan Lee created him because he thought it, would be, it was interesting how you can you can technically try to rule the conquer the, you know conquer the world with, with no punishment because you're a diplomat. But if you steal a, a carton of milk, you can send, you can be sent to jail. Mm -hmm. So he created Doctor Doom because of that because he's so powerful and he's like he's not gonna go to prison and he mixes magic with science. So. Mm -hmm. It's he's my he's my favorite villain. I do wish that him and the Joker. Are you know, yes, but we're talking about Marvel. Yeah, <laughs> I do wish that in our universe that they didn't have to. We don't have to worry about laws, and we could actually have you know X Men with this. But could you imagine the cost of those movies if they had too many heroes? I though. mean, fuck, you have I mean Robert Downey Jr. and Hugh Jackman in a movie that would be. So goddamn expensive. And then you have all the other characters. I mean, Scarlett Johansson's the highest paid female actress right now, so there's another one that's. Yeah, but she wouldn't meet so much. Like, if you actually get all the heroes. Those were. F the uh, Her and uh, Hawkeye are fucking filler heroes. If they had all of them, they wouldn't be in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They would be gone gone. Uh, yeah, I think if, if it was a different because if it sense, was because they wouldn't even have they wouldn't have even cast in the yeah. characters. Yeah. Like, we don't need we don't need Black Widow or Hawkeye. They, they don't. Have Superman. Yeah, I mean, if they I'll say Hawkeye will be there, but be be like in the sidelines. He will be like the little what's the secretary guy? or whatever. The, yeah, yeah. But Black Widow, uh, you know, what can you do? Like, really, you got Thor, the Hulk, Captain mm -hmm. America. Yeah, you know, Black Widow. I mean, he, they're filler. Like, I do like to see how they're all coming back together again. Like you know, in the the new Thor movie they showed, you know, with him and Hulk getting back together, and then Black Widow and Hawkeye will be Marvel TV shows if they had all of it. Oh yeah, yeah. and I think like I would love shield. to see a Black Widow Netflix show. That'd be cool. Yeah. That because it's dark and it's like spy. It's spy it, oh, we didn't even, I don't think. Yeah, we haven't had a podcast since that trailer came out. What trailer? The, oh, the 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 Defenders trailer. Mm -hmm. That looks. Have you? Did you see it? I saw it. The Pre I saw of it. I didn't watch it. It looks pretty freaking awesome. I mean, I don't know. I just don't trust tra trailers. They all look amazing, and then when you saw them, you're like, meh. Yeah. Here are all the best parts. Now <laughs> you don't need to watch it. I did hear an argument where they all said that, you know, or someone reviewed the trailer and was like, oh, yeah, Danny was, uh, Danny doesn't fit with all these characters. You know, even in the preview, he's just awkward and doesn't fit with all them. I'm like, what? Like he obviously. He, Have you seen Iron Fist? I've watched a couple episodes. What's, do you like them? It's one of the weaker out of okay. the four. I mean, I like the concept of Iron Fist. Like when I before I watched it, I like did a little research. I was like, this guy sounds fucking awesome. And then I watched, it, I was like, eh, it's okay. Yeah, I think it was. There's something about the story, mm -hmm. and of course the fighting. It wasn't as part. I was, it was, I was good, expecting but more it, fighting. I was expecting like Daredevil level. I mean, this dude is trained more than Daredevil. I would assume that he would be able to fight better than him. So I hope we had, that'd be cool if we get to see them in the Defenders fight each There's other. There's this scene in the trailer that I think is awesome. And it's him and Luke Cage. And so the hero oh, yeah. comes in and Danny does like the punches him and he's Luke Cage. And like, what? So Danny becomes the. Iron Fist and just 
punch him, you can see how he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Max, I'm like, who are you? <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm the Luke Cage, like, I'm the Iron Fist, the blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what? <laughs> yeah, I really like the the part where they're Jessica and Daredevil, they're walking into this hallway where there's another, you know, they're all fighting these guys. And she's like, you look really awkward. And he's like, well, it's your scar. Oh, he has you, look, you, look, you look ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Really it looks, I, I, it's weird too because usually the main show comes out in September. So I wonder if they're pushing it to August and then in November they'll release The Punisher and then in February it'll be Daredevil Season 3. Uh, I, I just, Daredevil was one of those that they're going to run out of stories. He doesn't have that many stories. He has he has a couple more that he becomes basically the ruler of the fist, and that's pretty much it. He's done. Same as Luke Cage and all of like that's they well, have yeah. a limited amount of stories. They're good stories. They're in their prime right now. They're just gonna do what they're gonna do, and then they're probably. I mean, look at I mean Arrow's still going. Yeah, but Arrow's copying fucking Batman. Yeah, you got they fucking storyline to go. I actually yeah. found. That, <laughs> yeah. I read an article today that was also on IG and that stated that. Uh, I guess they're in the. They're trying to incorporate the actual Justice League. They're slowly moving towards that because in like Supergirl, um, this week I guess they're talking to Superman and he was like, or, and then Supergirl's like, oh yeah, he has a dark friend or something. That they're referencing Batman and then yeah, if that's you, a Trump card right there. And yeah, like oh Batman is here, and I'll be like, what? Yeah, <laughs> I, I just you know what I'm. Well, I'm on, I just watched season. Three or I watched the episode where uh, Barry comes in as the Flash. I've seen uh, him as Barry in the second season, but he comes in as the Flash, and it, it was. Do you watch Gotham? I started watching it like when it first came out, but I haven't watched any recent. Episodes. I just uh, there's I just watched one episode. I just watched the first season. I just stopped quit watching it. But there's this the the Joker. He does a pretty fucking good job as a joke. Cam- yeah. Cameron Ma- uh, yeah, they, he does. They, they, they cut his face off and he basically puts it back on. Oh, he's like, he's from great. Shameless. That's yeah. how he got famous. And yeah, he's does a fantastic job of that. And the guy who plays the Riddler is really fucking good. They did a good job on that show. Yeah, it, it's some Poison of the I- story. Oh, Poison Ivy is hot. Oh, oh yeah. But story the storyline sometimes lag, and I'm not a huge fan of the kid that plays Bruce Wayne because he's kind of a little hey, bitch. I don't think it's. <laughs> That's the they're mainly focusing on all the backgrounds of all yeah. these villains. Like, oh, I wonder how Mister Freeze fucking yeah. came to be, or how the Joker. Yeah, but and, and there's a lot of Gordon. There's yeah, Gordon. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of backstory there. But I, I mean, I the first season I love. The second season I watched a couple episodes. I was like, yeah, fun asleep. And hey, I guess diverge. Have you guys watched any more of Agents of Shield? This have you seen? I watch when I, it comes to Netflix, and I. Oh, man, dude, this season is probably the best season. It's so good because they have... Th- kind of like what Gotham has done, where they split up the seasons in different story arcs. You know, like last season they have like the Rise... Not Rise of the Have Dome. you seen it? I've seen a couple episodes of it. When I saw what it was, I was like, oh, there's no superheroes in it? Eh, it's whatever. It's they're in humans now. now. Say what? Yeah, they're, they're humans. humans. Oh, and that's actually- Marvel's X-Men. So they can't that's see. I, I know about the Inhumans. There used to be a video game about the Inhumans. They actually uh, have Inhumans that are coming out in September. The actual TV show. Did you Did you play that video game? Marvel said, so. "Okay, well then, never mind." Well, go ahead. That's, yeah. Well, basically, uh, there's these experiments that people were trying to make <clears throat> the counterparts of each of the superheroes. Like, there's one who was meant to take on the thing, and it's his name is Brigade, Brigade, mm-hmm. and he's just like a whole brigade of people mixed into one. There's one that's called Hazmat, who kind of like has Spider Man's powers, and then there's a whole bunch of different ones. But oh, that's I, neat. I've never heard of that. I game. doubt that they're doing that. This this sounds like it might be something. Yeah, well, Marvels and Humans in the comics, they basically it says the scrolls came to Earth and modified humans, and they're becoming humans, and they're like. Basically mutants. They're mutants. Okay. But they they always were in the... They were never very popular. But then Marvel lost the X-Men, and they started pushing the humans really hard in the comics. Still with the X-Men, really hard, mm-hmm. because it still sells comics. But the Inhumans 
and they are basically the same thing. There is there is a royalty. Is there's that? a royalty who's black bolt who basically, if he talks, his he has super power like voice. So if he a whisper can destroy a city. He's like black canary. And then there's Medusa. Medusa that's has the, the hair, the but hair. it's like the snakes, but it's the hair. But yeah, so it's basically they're just mutants, but it's called. But now Marvel is using them as the new mutants. But they, so they're gonna be born. They're born with it, and there's this mist that will basically activate their powers and then they're gonna start getting this hatred there's the humans are starting to hate the inhumans Excellent. and the inhumans are just protecting themselves and there's one that are we should work with the humans and, and the other ones like we should eliminate humans because we're the next evolutionary step but they're making they released a teaser for it but in September they have the inhumans TV show finally coming out because they were gonna make a movie out of it it was part of the lineup um Back when they released the huge movie lineup for Phase for Marvel three. phases, they, and it just looks they, stupid. They, instead, now it's going to be a show. And the characters they look nothing like in the actual. Yeah. So basically, this is what the, the characters look. Yeah. yeah. But look at the actual TV and show. This is what the, the girl just doesn't look like. You could totally tell she's wearing a wig. You can totally tell that. I don't know why it's not loading. Then they have freaking Ramsey from. Yeah, they have Game Ramsey Thrones in there. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> one of the guys that. Hopefully, yeah. he's not a bad guy. I feel bad. For he's that. not. He's he's good. He's like I really didn't like being that guy. But yeah, like it, it, they're basically they're pretty badass. Black Bolt is fucking badass. So it, Anson Mount is a really good actor. He was on uh, yeah, Hell on Wheels on AMC. War War uh, Hulk. Uh, War War Hulk or War War Hulk is when Hulk comes back from this planet and he's fucking pissed. And the first thing he does to make a statement is to go to Black Bolt. And Black Bolt is there, and he's like, go away. And he just, he, he's like in, you know, he's in the moon, and he just basically sends the Hulk, like, miles away. And Hulk comes back, like, nothing. Just like, I didn't he, I didn't come to hear you whisper. I'm coming here to, I'm coming here to hear you scream. And two seconds later, like, the next couple panels, you can see Black Bolt just destroyed, and Hulk in his head like this. He's like, this is for the rest of society. And people are like, Holy fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> and Hope goes and beats the shit of Iron Man, beats the shit of X Men, beats the shit of every oh, single I, one. I, I know what I know what, what yeah. The, yeah. And basically he at the end Is this is this where the Illuminati forms the yeah. Well the Illuminati was formed before the uh, Civil War. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So they sent they knew that it okay, we need to get the hell they want well, technically they sent it because he was too powerful and they mm-hmm. knew the Illuminati knew it's gonna war is gonna come. And whoever has Hulk was gonna win, so they send him away, and they're gonna send him to this peaceful planet. But he gets pissed in the way there and breaks the ship and goes through this warm loop and ends up in this war world planet. that makes him be a gladiator. But then he he, he in the end of the story he gets married, he has a kid, but the planet just gets destroyed, and he gets sent back to Earth. And he was he's fucking pissed because he thought the Illuminati killed his family, so he's gonna go. To Dark to uh, Black Bolt, Xavier, Iron Man, Fantastic Four, and, and all then uh, Xavier Charles Xavier. Uh-huh. So he Reed Richards, Xavier, Tony Stark, and a couple other people. Neymar, and Neymar, yeah, yeah. that make up the Illuminati. And the then he just goes people. there to anybody and beats the living shit of every single one. Like, he beats the like crap of Wolverine. He grabs Wolverine and just starts punching them. And he's like, I know you can reheal, but I wonder how many concussions can you have? And he's like, boom, 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 and breaks. He, Beats him. Then the next guy comes. Iron Man with Hulk armor beats him. Beats Black Ball. Beats every single. It was one. the worst thing for them to send him away because before he was just this rant, this anger, just mm-hmm. taking the shit out. He was primal, but then on that planet, he learned how to fucking fight and shit. So yeah, he was focused. Oh wow. He was he was he was focused for each single one of them. Red Hulk then? Or? No, no. Red Hulk is a different person. So I Red think Hulk, it's the general. The general attacks. Oh, yeah. He gets his blood stuck mm-hmm. to sit in, and he doesn't increase in power. He just gets he a keeps hotter. His, he keeps his, his mental state, mm-hmm. though, I think. Well, yeah. yeah, he yeah. keeps his mental state, but he gets hotter and hotter, and he, and he bursts in fire if he gets mad. But Hulk can always beat him. He can always beat him. He's, it's, a, it's just a fun book. It's, that's when I want to... And they're mixing Thor with Planet Hulk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew that. 
But yeah, I'd be interested to see, and I'm sure Doctor Strange is how Thor and Hulk make it back to Earth when Thanos is happening. We're going outside of that. I mean, that's the only if way. If he has his hammer, if he gets his hammers back, he has that's yes. But in the previews or the trailers for that, it got destroyed. It does. I wonder if it, yeah, it's the last well, second, it gets all too bad there. I mean, it's comic book. Because Do- Doctor Strange is in it, so I wonder if he does like he any can time re- manipulation. Reverse the time on it because yeah. he's in. If he's in, the, oh yeah, he can actually do that. But yeah. he does yeah. it with the apple because he has a he? time stone and he can do. That's just what he did in that in with the, the apple Strange that's, movie. That's how he beat uh, Dormammu. Or yeah, that's Dormammu. What he's Dormammu. Dormammu came to Bargain. That was a pretty funny part at the end of Doctor Strange when Thor is in there and he's drinking beer and it just keeps filling back up. <laughs> he's like, All right, this is pretty cool. And I know in the movie. Because people saw them in like Australia, they have a, uh, they have like a mock up New York City, and they were there, and that's where it, you know Loki and Thor were there, and then to see Doctor Strange. So I wonder but that he had his long hair still in that scene. So what what so what are you looking forward in the comic book or game? Are you, is there anything that you're looking forward in? Uh, there's so much shit. <laughs> The main thing I'm focusing on now is getting a Switch and playing the new Legend of Zelda. That is cool. That's that's the main thing I'm, I'm focusing on. So I heard it's great. I heard it does pure awesomeness. I'm trying really hard not to watch any videos on it or listen to anybody who's talking about it because I've always been a Legend of Zelda fan. We have so. heard that it's probably one of the best games ever made. Although I'm not a big fan of Nintendo, but oh, I love. I have a tattoo of Zelda, so. I can't go too bad around it. I'm I'm waiting too, but I just gonna wait until the Nintendo Switch is just better. <laughs> better. It is not the best right now. Yeah. Well, it has to do the games that I want. It's like Mario Kart and Zelda. So if they make a Mario Party or Mario Tennis, and I'm zoned. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. <laughs> yes. So uh, like we have awkward questions that we we ask for the podcast. They're just random weird questions that we ask. So my question this week is, if a goldfish was a human, what would it eat? Human you, have to, you have to elaborate on that question a little bit. Is was it, it a goldfish and then it just it got was turned? A gold, okay, fair enough. Yeah, it was, was a goldfish. Like, human food. <laughs> it was a, a banana. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. A goldfish that became a human. If a goldfish became a human, what would it Does eat? Does it have the mentality of a goldfish or has the mentality of a human? That we don't know. I mean, it, it got it's it got its goldfish s- synapses uploaded into a human brain, yeah. and then it just like there I you think, go. I would think it I would think eat, nothing. I think, it would, I think it would. I think it would eat Captain Crunch because it looks like fish pellets <laughs> or any cereal for that matter. Exactly. Or, Why I mean, not fuck, fish pellets? Three pebbles. They'd be like, "Why didn't we have this weird fish? Why wouldn't they just eat fish pellets? Because it wouldn't be as big to them then just because it would grown. So okay, like they would need something bigger. See, but this this raises so many other questions. <laughs> the fish would know how something. to walk. It would know how to use its arms. Exactly. It would just lay on the ground and like, this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> what are these? <laughs> That's why we asked. Yeah. Uh, last time, our question was if, a, if there was a battle, who would win, a pancake or a waffle? A uh, pancake. No, a waffle. Because a waffle could hold blueberries and it would shoot them out like Saturn missiles. Yeah, but... Oh, we got one that's perfect for our chef. Okay. How deep does the pan have to be to be kind of pot? Uh, <laughs> that was one of the questions. And we said, what, like, what, like three inches? It has to be... Okay, at, <laughs> at three inches, if it has one handle on it, it could still be considered a pan, but if it has two handles on it, you could, you could consider it a pot. That's fair. There you go. See? But what's your take on the pancake? I want to hear this. We didn't finish that. Because... Because I like pancakes better than waffles. <laughs> That's a lot. That's fair. Alright. Alright. Follow us, Two Ordinary Nerds, um, on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. YouTube. Wherever you get your shit. Wherever you get your All shit. All the socials. Pornhub, pl- RedTube, what? Where can they follow you at? Right now on Facebook, I have to step my uh, social game up. Instagram too. Oh, in Instagram, yeah. The pictures and the socials. You should ones. do a Snapchat. 
I should do Snapchat. I'm Snapchat would be easy because it lasts like that. And people would see it pop up and just see it in their story and be like, you know what? That like resonates in their head. Oh, hey, you know what? I really might need to buy some chocolates or something that's coming up versus Instagram that they look at it occasionally, but... I, I should, that that is a good point, but right now I, I don't want to be one of those people like, oh my product's so great, look at yeah. this, it's so yeah. pretty, and then they eat it like, oh this tastes like shit. Like, See, that's, that's what I it, mean. It's not true. It tastes delicious. <laughs> I've been looking at it all fucking we day. We promote the like, shit out of our podcast, and it definitely tastes like shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, we were we're not gonna do two podcasts, and obviously because this one is an extended version. So, so uh, cheers, cheers, cheers. And there will be a.